Explore the fascinating story behind the 1943 movie Watch on the Rhine. This video is filled with interesting, surprising, and touching facts that will keep you interested. Did you know there's a really cool background to this old movie? Keep watching to learn some little known stories that will really surprise you. Do you have any special memories connected to this film? Or maybe you're interested in some hidden facts about how it was made. Share your stories and thoughts in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. Get ready to dive into the interesting world of Watch on the Rhine and discover its secrets like never before. Let's explore together and uncover the mysteries behind this timeless movie. Released in 1943, the movie Watch on the Rhine made a lasting mark on its audience. It garnered praise for its portrayal of anti-fascist themes, showcasing courage and sacrifice. The narrative and performances received positive feedback, sparking discussions about patriotism, resistance, and the fight against oppression. After hitting the screens, the film prompted conversations about standing up against tyranny during World War II. It became a symbol of resilience and solidarity, resonating with those living through the challenging times. Watch on the Rhine didn't just stay within the realm of movies. It inspired adaptations and spin-offs in literature, theater, and radio dramas. The story's themes transcended the silver screen, becoming a part of popular culture. Fans eagerly sought merchandise related to the movie, turning posters and memorabilia into collectibles. The movie's timeless message of resisting tyranny is what continues to be remembered and appreciated. This cinematic piece is fondly recalled by audiences and scholars alike for its contribution to portraying heroism and resistance. Betty Davis, famous for her roles in American movies, had her voice changed in Brazil. Their Portuguese dubbers Ida Gomes, Ilka Pinero, Gloria Ladney, and Selma Lopes dubbed her performances in different films, including Watch on the Rhine. Henry Daniel, who often worked with director George Cukor, made seven appearances in Cukor's movies. But Cukor thought Daniel was particularly funny in The Exile. Alan Hale Jr., even though he acted alongside Barbara Hale in The Giant Spider Invasion, wasn't related to her. But that didn't stop them from having good chemistry on screen. In Hollywood collaborations, Daniel's humor in The Exile stands out. Betty Davis's voice sounds different in Portuguese, and Alan Hale Jr.'s project with Barbara Hale adds an interesting aspect to their careers. During the advent of sound, Frank Reicher returned to Hollywood to direct German-language versions of American films. Betty Davis originally offered the role of fiery pianist Sandra Kovac in The Great Lie, instead took the less showy role of Maggie Patterson. She suggested her good friend Mary Astor for the role of Sandra to boost Astor's career, which had been hurt by a very nasty custody battle in 1936. Astor went on to win the Best Supporting Actress Oscar for her performance. Davis's favorite line is from The Cabin in the Cotton, where she said, I'd like to kiss you, but I just wash my hair. Many years later, she used it in her acceptance speech when she won the American Film Institute Lifetime Achievement Award in 1977, except she used the word love instead of like, in 1941, gossip columnist Shayla Graham disclosed that Paul Lucas, known for his role in the movie, had a keen interest in tennis, even during the shooting of Watch on the Rhine. Lucas, reportedly a serious player, once halted a game because he found the bystanders' chatter distracting. Meanwhile, Alan Hale Jr., another actor in the film, faced health challenges in the 1970s when he suffered a blood clot in his leg. Despite surviving this ordeal, Doctors advised him to quit smoking and shed some weight for his well-being. Interestingly, Hale Jr. followed in his father's footsteps by becoming a member of the Hollywood Hackers, a showbiz group that his father had been associated with years earlier. This group performed wherever the occasion called for it, reflecting Hale Jr.'s connection to Hollywood's social scene. In one scene of a later film, Elizabeth Taylor did a dramatic rendition of a line by Betty Davis. Although Davis recalled delivering it differently, her version became overshadowed. She humorously embraced the exaggerated portrayal in her own performances. Interestingly, Betty Davis had familial ties to New Hampshire, tracing back to her maternal great-great-grandparents, Cutting and Hannah Faber. Davis, known for her wit, once gifted a substantial amount of liquor upon discovering her new brother-in-law's struggle with alcoholism. In her roles as a caring mother and wife on screen, Beulah Bondi led a life quite different from her characters, never marrying nor having children. Her portrayal of maternal figures contrasted sharply with her personal choices. Betty Davis, known for her powerful performances, faced a playful roast on the Dean Martin Celebrity Roast in 1974. Vincent Price humorously remarked about Davis's on-screen sacrifices, jokingly highlighting the toll her characters took on her, from giving up beauty to sacrificing eyesight in various films, including the private lives of Elizabeth and Essex and Dark Victory. 
The roast extended to the Virgin Queen, where, according to Price, she gave up her hobby, evoking laughter from the audience. Alan Hale Jr., recognized for his role on Gilligan's Island, passed away on January 2, 1990, just six months after his co-star Jim Backus. The coincidence of their deaths added a somber note to the cast of the beloved Gilligan's Island. These stories about Beulah Bondi, Betty Davis, and Alan Hale Jr. provide glimpses into the lives of the talented individuals who contributed to the entertainment industry in various ways. Each tale adds a unique layer to the broader narrative of the era, showcasing the personal and professional sides of these figures. Alan Hale Jr. never collaborated with his father in any cinematic projects. Beulah Bondi modified the spelling of her surname from Bondi to Bondi to ensure it fit neatly on Marquis overcoming issues with letter alignment. Contrary to rumors, her father supported her acting career and managed a significant opera house during her breakthrough. Paul Lucas clinched the inaugural Golden Globe for Best Actor in a Drama Motion Picture. In Watch on the Rhine, Betty Davis portrayed the character Mrs. Agnes Hurley. Interestingly, she cited this role as her favorite, highlighting the challenge it presented. Geraldine Fitzgerald, known for her role in the film, was initially a redhead in Hollywood. However, due to her hair appearing dark in photographs, she was often mistaken for a brunette. In her sole early color film, Wilson, her hair was dyed brown for her portrayal of Edith Wilson, concealing her natural red hair from the public eye. Davis, on the other hand, had a notable involvement in leading Girl Scouts and Cub Scouts, reflecting her childhood experience as a decorated Girl Scout. These aspects shed light on the multifaceted lives of the actors beyond their roles in Watch on the Rhine. During the filming of the 1943 movie Watch on the Rhine, the first-time director had to be reminded constantly of the limited availability of celluloid film due to World War II rationing. This constraint required efficient shooting, with no room for repeated takes. Betty Davis, who starred in the film, attended Cushing Academy in Massachusetts. The school now awards a scholarship in her name annually to outstanding scholar-athletes. Geraldine Fitzgerald, another actress considered for a role in the movie, faced challenges due to her contentious relationship with the studio head. Her refusal to appear in certain Warner Bros. Productions led to her being denied the opportunity to portray a character in The Maltese Falcon, a classic film from 1941. Despite these behind-the-scenes hurdles, Watch on the Rhine managed to come to fruition, becoming a notable entry in cinematic history.